can actually lose their ears with that. Don't spare it. Four way drafting on a budget. So it flags up an alert. Texel Black. She's well improved actually. Welcome to Sheep School. In today's video, we have 315 yos going to six rams. Let's have a look. So the first job is get these ladies in. So we're ready to roll here. We have our setup. It's a different kind of a setup. We're not using the Stanley race. It's actually the back gate, two side panels and a ritzy diverter here. We've all the O's in this block of ground up here. With Robbie ready to roll here. You're highly motivated, Robbie. Highly motivated. If you are as good now, we need you out of it early. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie's looking for the early finish. I think he, he, he thinks he's still in the ESB, but <laughs> not around here. <laughs> so what are we doing? We have our yo's in the race here. I have my diverter system set up here. I'll just give you a look at that. So we're doing kind of four way drafting where we're diverting sheep out. Let's see if I can show you this. Sheep can go that way. They can come back into where I'm working in here. And we can let a batch out here and then we can let a batch back in there. Why are we diverting in batches? Well, we've six rams, six groups. Well, we've actually seven. Because I'm going to run 10 sheep this year with a Texel ram. A little bit of an experiment, just to show what these clins can do running with a terminal ram. That's another wee job, we have to pick 10 out. But how do we pick them out? So previously I would have been using the clipboard and an Excel file and you had predetermined what sheep can go to which ram from their back reading that they're not related. The one thing you want to avoid in this job is inbreeding, so anything that's too closely related. Uh, that's a whole topic for another discussion. What's too closely related? Technically, every purebred animal is reasonably closely related, but in my operation, about three, four generations, preferably away from a relative, a blood relative. That's the way I kind of operate. I'll give you a look on the computer here, the way I pick out the sheep, have a look at their ancestry, and then I set an alert on my software Upload it onto the EID reader. I'll just give you a look at the reader here. So this is the reader So I have all my sheep Predetermined on the software To different rams that they're not related. That's kind of how I do it used to do it on the Excel job But it was tediously slow grand when you've only about a hundred yos, but we're running just three one five three hundred and fifteen going to the ram this year turn on my reader and when I scan me sheep so it flags up an alert. So it says AMD yellow. So it's telling me which, gra which ram of which group of which color to mark my sheep. Now the way I mark them is I have all my spray marks lined out here for the different groups. So when I'm marking the sheep here, it's told me which color. So I just put a little mark down in between the shoulders here. Just like that, that'll stay on them all winter and I know which ram they should be with in case we had any breakouts right now. We shouldn't, touch wood, we shouldn't, but just it's easy to keep an eye on things visually. So I go through each sheep like this, scan the next one. So that's a different sheep. This one is going to a ram called Pat and the color here is blue. So on and so forth, we have to rattle through all these. We'll give you a look at maybe, maybe have a chat along the way, but we'll get going. So I'm not sure if you can see what we're doing here. It's a type of four-way drafting. It's a little bit slow, but it's working anyway. Uh, I've done this before, two-way drafting, but then back then I only had two or three rams. This year, six rams in total. Only had five last year, so we're running six this year. So the orange is actually going into this group down here, so I can divert them, I'll change my diverter over here, and they're actually going in with these few sheep down here that we've brought in for service.
So that's the first of the reds. They're going into a separate pen just behind you there. That's actually the ram that was in the last video that hurt his foot, the lad I'd picked out for Tullamore's show. Probably my favourite ram. But yet, I haven't lambed it down to him yet, so I don't know. He's breeding lovely lambs, but I don't know how good he is until I actually lamb down his offspring. So that'll be next year. We'll see how he goes. Now, so you might be thinking, this seems like a lot of work. Uh, the answer is yes, it probably is a lot of work. There's quite a bit of work sorting them out on the software system and going through them all. I would guess there was a full day going through them all, checking down through their ancestry to see what they're related to and what they're not. But then, what's the, what's the alternative? The alternative is sell your rams, your breeding rams every two years and replace them with fresh blood, take in fresh blood. The problem I see in that when you're performance recording, if you stumble across a really good ram that's doing a really good job, and you don't actually have the ancestry of his offspring, you can't do that. You can't keep them, so you have to get rid of them and you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot. So that's why I chose to go down this route. When I'm performance recording anyway, I know all the ancestry. So yes, there's a lot of work in it, but I'm quite happy to do it. And I've had uh, crops of lambs from rams for up to seven years. Uh, one ram in particular, the, f the first ram I ever bought, he actually came from Scotland. Uh, he was a very good sheep. And uh, I had a total of 768 lambs from him. But that's the alternative. Sell your rams every two years and buy in replacements. Which is great for me, that's selling rams, but not ideal if you're breeding sheep. So you'll see here, even since the last day that we've done a, a bit of work with these sheep, the body condition has improved. They're in great nick. They're really fat. Now, she's maybe not so much, but there's the one that had the nasty uh, photosensitization, I think it's called, the poisoning from the St. John's wort. So she's recovered well. Her ears are well uh, covered. I believe that they can actually lose their ears with that. As one of my frequent commenters said, uh, I think it was Wendy. Bit of head scratching when she had a department inspection and no tags in no ears. How do you get around that one? She actually had to make a pendant to put around the sheep's neck. There you go. Someone asked me, where did I get the cull tags? The answer is, I get them from Cormac Tagging, the same company I buy my ear tags off. Uh, I think they're in Galway, Cormac Tagging. Like Cormac Tags. Uh, very few replacement tags every year and sheep are very good at getting their heads stuck in places that they shouldn't. Uh, generally don't lose many tags, what happens is the odd one catches the tag and it rips the ear out but Cormac tagging is the answer to your question, they're about 35 cent each. Can you see that? Texel Black. So this is the first sheep out of I think I've 10, maybe 12 picked out to go to the Texel mm. Ram. So they're getting black. So this is the first one She's actually a nice looking sheep, but I don't like her uh, breeding. She's actually from a ram that I culled and got rid of most of the stock off her. Uh, that, they're okay in performance, but they're just not breeding particularly nice looking sheep. So there's about 10 or 12 of them. Gonna put them in the textile. Be interesting to see how they go. You'll see the color flashing up there as well, along with the ram's name or the name that I give them. Last year was the first year I had that device. Previously I was using the clipboard and all on paper and almost had my hair pulled out by the time we had everything picked out. Last year I made the mistake of not actually putting the colour along with the ram's name. So you had to think, every time the ram's name came up, you had to think, what colour have I assigned to that ram? So this year, got a little bit cuter. Every day is the school day. Realised that you could put a description along with the alert. So very useful that I have a colour coding as well. Uh, just in case I ever lost them alerts, uh, I like to have a visual mark on them as well. This is four-way drafting on a budget. Now, it's a, it's a Ritchie diverter, two-way diverter that I would have bought. So, a little bit of a modification to make it work. Because there's six different batches of sheep in this, so I'm going to split them. Uh, one batch will contain two different mobs of sheep, we'll run them through again. And then we'll have three batches separated. So for anyone that's wondering, these sheep are purebred Clins. I'll just put the name up on the screen here. So 
There are maternal sheep that are bred for crossing with terminal rams, your Texel, Suffolk, Charlotte, Beltex, whatever. Let me know in the comments if you can think of any more good terminal breeds that would suit or that you have any experience of running clins with. So I originally bought these sheep to run with a Texel or Suffolk ram. I hadn't decided at the time, but I realized it was quite a job to actually get them and I decided to run them purebred then. I was going to go down the performance recording route anyway. So I decided to go down the purebred route. And it means that I have, yes, I have a slower finish in ram lamb, but I'm getting a premium for my yo lambs. And there's actually less work at them. They're a hardier kind of a sheep. So the purebred lambs, even though in most breeds, particularly terminal breeds, when you hear purebred, you think soft, weak, good at dying. These are kind of the opposite. They're bred to be quite hardy and quite good in their feet. So I'm producing these females. You might have seen it in the sale video where we're getting quite a premium for producing hoggets. This is the other sheep that had the photosensitization from eating the St. John's wort in the last sheep video. Uh, she's well improved actually. She's growing a bit of hair back in her ears. So the next job is rattle. So that is the powder you might have seen in that last video where delivery of fluke doses came. So what is rattle? Uh, there's a couple of ways of doing this. Uh, this is actually powder, it's just dry powder. Uh, maybe I'll go back to actually explain what rattle is and what it's for. Rattle is basically, you place a coloured uh, marker on a ram's chest, on his brisket, in under his neck. So when he jumps on a yo's back to serve her, uh, it leaves a mark on the yo's rump. So you know that that yo has been served. Now, what's the purpose of that? If the ram happened to be infertile, or he spiked the temperature from a sore foot or pneumonia, or plenty of things that can go wrong, you can buy a ram that's actually infertile. And I think in seven years of selling rams, I've only had one ram that came back infertile and we've just done a bit of a replacement job, but it's very uncommon in clins anyway, and I'm not sure about other breeds. Uh, let me know if, you, if you've ever had problems with an infertile ram. The problem is if you were unlucky enough to have an infertile ram, and especially in the operation I'm running where you're what's called single sire mating, so you're running one ram with a batch of yos. A lot of commercial farmers that are producing lambs for the factory might run a few rams together and it doesn't really matter, they can work away. So if you had an infertile lamb or a ram, it wouldn't actually matter because some of the other rams will take up the slack. In my operation, if I wasn't using a rattle and the next time you'd find out would be scanning time because all your sheep would be empty. So the idea is you put a light colour on your sheep first. So the first colour I use is yellow. And after 14 days of the ram working, so you'll have marked quite a number of sheep, um, I change it to orange then. And the, and the idea is that when the ram jumps on a sheep that was previously marked yellow, you can actually see that uh, as a fresh colour. So it's called a repeat. So if, if you have a large number of repeats, it means your ram isn't working properly. There's some problem. Now I've only ever had a problem with one ram. He was an old ram that had a sore foot. Probably shouldn't have been using him. Not a great job to be running a ram with a sore foot because he's going to produce lambs, or especially if you're keeping breeding sheep with a sore foot. Anyway, I made the mistake of running. Now he was only running with 15 sheep. He was quite old, he was seven. Uh, I think he only covered about three of them. The rest of them all repeated. But I just swapped the ram over but it left the lamb and went on later. But if I wasn't rattling, I wouldn't have known about that. So somebody actually mentioned in the comments about the colors. They had found that orange was a bit of a problem. I think it was uh, Brian Morrow in Scotland. Uh, he had mentioned that orange is a bit of a problem in the wet weather that it can kind of fade between yellow and red because you change your colors consecutively to darker colors. The color I found a problem with was green. Uh, especially in this powder. Now it might work okay in a crayon. There's another version of this where you can use a, a harness on rams. Now that's a strap that goes around the ram's chest. I'll maybe show you that here on the screen. That's a 
Different type of a de device where you put, slot in a crayon and you put a pin through it. Works fine. I used them for a couple of years, but when I was starting out, I was kind of overworking the rams. They were covering maybe 90 or 100 yos some years. Now the lambing did go on three, even four weeks, uh, but it meant that I, I was able to get away with less rams. But the problem I found was some of my grazing is a bit rough and there were some branches and the sheep were running through hedges at the time. Bit of a mess, but anyway. The crayon actually broke out of its holder, so there was nothing for marking the sheep. So I didn't actually know if the sheep were marked or not. The other problem as well was the harness was inclined to hurt the sheep a bit around the front legs and the brisket when they were working extra hard. Now, if you're only tipping maybe 30 or 40 yos, maybe not a problem. Let me know your own experience on a harness. Do you prefer the harness or the rattle powder that I'm going to use here? I know some people use the crayon from the harness and actually rub that onto the ram's chest and it works fine. Probably a cleaner operation than what I'm about to do. But uh, anyway, we'll get a bit of this mixed up here. I'll give you a look at the process. Quite simple, cooking oil. Now I know some people use grease and engine oil, but uh, there's a downside to it. I know from fiddling with mechanical stuff and maybe get a cut in your hand and mineral oil or grease, it's inclined to sting a cut. So maybe a better version is vegetable oil. I go to my local takeaway and get a, a bit of waste oil. They give me a bit in a bucket. Works a fine actually, it's, it's quite good for the job. So just pour in the oil first. So a bit of the powder next. That just goes in next. Oh, that's not too much now. So a bit of a mix. It's only a bit of steel I'm using. Uh, I've used a spoon in the past. Uh, Orla wasn't overly impressed with it when I brought it back to the house. But uh, it's a bit of steel from the workshop. So the consistency of this, you need it. I suppose like treacle or molasses would be the kind of consistency that you'd be looking for. If it's too thin, it's not inclined to stay on the ram's brisket and chest. Too thick, it's very hard to mix it, so it's just hard to get it right. Maybe a little bit thin, might just uh, add a bit more powder. If, you're, if, it's, if it's too thick, you can just add some more oil. Perfect, lovely job. Next job is get a, ma get a ram that's actually gone out with these yos. We catch him and we get a bit of this rubbed on his chest and he can go off up the field. Just gonna use the headlock. Now you might have seen me using this before uh, in some of the other videos, especially yos with prolapse. Makes life a little bit easier. So if you're interested in one of these, they're gonna be in the sheep school shop soon. Uh, I'll let you know when that's live. Uh, stay tuned and I'll keep you updated on that. Uh, quite a useful little device for this job. So this lad is one of my better rams. He's breeding very nice lambs. So he's getting probably the most sheep out of all the rams this year. He's getting about 60. So. Uh, we get a bit of rattle on him. He's going with these yo's down here. These ones marked red. Uh, how do I apply it? Rubber glove into the hand and onto the uh, brisket here and on under his neck. Don't spare it. Now I might have to top this yellow up. They seem to get through the yellow pretty fast. Depends on the weather as well. So that's the rattle applied to this lad. He's ready to go with Joe's. Sheep diverted, easy enough job on the, on the four way. We need to get some of these moved over to the other block of ground. So, a bit of a shuffling match here. We have to move sheep 
from the home place where the shed is over to this other bit of ground. So we're bringing loads over, we're bringing some back. So a couple of rams here to rattle. I'm doing this lad in the race. Not as easy as the headlock, but look, we can get it done. So this is the other lad with two rams to do here. I have to run the into the trailer next. This ram is actually my favourite ram. Uh, he's one of my homebred rams. Get him into the trailer here. That's four rams out. Daylight has beaten us. So I was just saying about that ram before daylight bed us yesterday. He's one of my favourite rams, that stock ram. He's about three year old sheep now. So I kept him out of a six year old sheep. She always had twins, reared them up to a good weaning weight. And I always thought if she didn't fall apart with prolapse, mastitis, bad feet, she's a good sheep to breed from. And it's working. My hoggets are very good off that sheep. A nice looking sheep. He mightn't be the most handsome looking sheep in the world, but he's breeding nice females. That's what I want. So these are the hoggets that I didn't sell in Roscommon. I think there's about 50, 51 in this batch. Just gonna mix them with these sheep, these older sheep in across the hedge there. And we'll cross the road now. Robbie's on the way. He rang me there, he's coming. He's up, he's up anyway. He's enjoying this retirement. In fairness, he done a good day's work yesterday, so. We can't abuse him. It's the 25th of October. 145 day gestation. That leaves me lambing. I think around the 18th of March, just after St. Patrick's Day, bit of grass, weather usually improves a little bit. Well, you never know, you never know. There's no guarantee, but at least there should be a bit of grass. And I found these sheep, if there's something to eat, they should have enough milk to keep two lambs alive. So that's why we're going for later lambing. I have a good shed for lambing, but I don't have much in the line of facilities for actually keeping sheep in the shed with lambs. I'd rather just get them out. As soon as they're dried off, get them out. So that's why I kind of leave the lamb a little bit later. So the gestation, I work off 145 day gestation. So I'll show you the table that I use. It gives the date of service and the expected date of lambs. I'll pop the link in the description. I find it very useful. It's great for working out where you need to be to figure out your lambing date. So this is the other batch of sheep, including the hoggets. There's about 150 in this. Just have to cross the road with them here. And we get these sorted next. Robbie, good man, he's back. He's back in action. We got him out of the bed eventually. I know, in fairness, he had a big day yesterday. I was up early. <laughs> I believe him. I don't know if you do. Ready to roll, Robbie. Keep at it. Right. Keep our lift. So we'll just run this batch through the race again. We haven't as good a setup as back at the shed. But look, we get them done. Bit of shuffling, moving sheep here and there. Busy day. We'll keep at it. Ground conditions are very difficult. I'll just give you a look at that. <laughs> Robbie, Robbie I'm, just... I'm ready to be cold. <laughs> So this is the first batch sorted. We decided to walk them down the road a little bit quicker than the trailer. A bad for a man of 67. <laughs> so this is the field we left you last night in where we dropped the ram off. So he's up there with a batch of about 35 or so yos already. Next job is we get the green ones moved. Myself and Robbie are getting plenty of exercise in today. So this is my quietest ram, quite easy to hold, just get him rattled up. Pain has got into a serious mess, a lot to be said for the shed. It'd be great to have the land all in one block, but what do you do? That's the story of most people's land in Ireland here, it's fragmented into different blocks. So this is the yellows going off here with their bite, we're just after rattling. Wait. My dog pops. So if the rest of these yellows over in the shade at the home place, we'll go and pick them up next. Quite a bit of work here, moving batches of sheep from one place to the other and back. But this is the price you pay with a purebred flock. So the sheep year starts here. The countdown to next year's lambing starts.
Ciao, see ya. This is our last delivery. We've all sorted out. Uh, an awful lot of work done. I sleep tonight. The Land Cruiser, the 4.2, is running at full operating temperature after that bit of moving. Busy day and a half to get all that done. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a like. Hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.